remember um, from um, the Letterman show.
Thank you, JJ, Pastor Dan. Good morning. Good morning. So how many had heard that song before? If you ever get a chance, read the lyrics because they're really, really awesome. So it was a song by the Bellamy Brothers, and it's uh, one of those songs where, again, it's that melody that hits you, and it's like, boom, you can sing it. Well, we're talking about growing in the church, and obviously outside things are growing. We got things sprouting up through the ground. We've got leaves popping out of trees. We've got birds that every time I walk past them, they come flying past me because there's a nest up there. And it's always creation that's happening, that change that we talked about all through Lent and Easter. Well, now we're in it. We are literally in it. And this week, Again, we're coming to the end of April. I cannot believe it's May tomorrow, especially with sleet up in Sheboygan this morning. So, sorry. Um, I wanted to thank also Chris Falker, good friend who led worship last week. He did a wonderful job with the Earth Day theme. And Marlene, that was a great um, discussion you gave on what we can do as, as followers of creation 
and participants. Well, this morning we're going to get a little bit deeper into that, and we're going to talk more about us, what it means to be growing in our faith. You're probably saying they say that every Sunday. Yeah, we do. But I want you to focus on the first line of that banner. Because I'm going to have some questions for you later. Don't, don't read the rest of it. Just I want you to look at the, the top line. We'll talk about that. So again, welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ. And we are here to celebrate with everyone, all of God's children. Everybody is loved in this grand place that we call earth, but we know it's even further than that. So with joy in our hearts, let us join together in our call to worship. Lord, make me a laborer of your peace. Where there is hatred, I may bring love. Where there is injury, I may bring forgiveness. Where there is discord, I may bring harmony. Where there is error, I may bring truth. Where there is doubt, I may bring faith. Where there is despair, I may bring hope. Where there is darkness, I may bring light. And where there is sadness, I may bring joy. God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost. Jesus, Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us the new commandment. Love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Let the people say, Amen. 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 This has got to be the shortest psalm I believe, in the Bible. Just a word of, you know, fun. This is Psalm 134 from the message. Come, bless God, all you servants of God, you priests of God, Posted to the night watch in God's shrine, lift your praising hands to the holy place and bless God. In turn, may God of Zion bless you, God who made heaven and earth. That's it. That's it. (laughs) Want to read it again, Edith? Yeah. (laughs) Please stand if you can and join in our opening hymn, O God in Whom All Life Begins. Thank you. 
Our morning prayer this morning comes with responses. So we'll go through, and a lot of it is, Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, we have not loved you with all our hearts and mind and soul. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not loved our neighbors as you have taught us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are indifferent to the saving grace of your word and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Forgive and heal us by your steadfast love made known to us in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now please take a moment to welcome each other to our worship this morning. Jim, you're back. Should we see how long it keep them standing? You may be seated. <laughs> it was a short psalm. We, we need filler, you know. <laughs> Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 41 to 47. That day, about 3,000 took him at his word, were baptized, and were signed up. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles, the life together, the common meal, and the prayers. Everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostles. And all the believers lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. People in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew as God added those who were saved. Here ends the scripture. I invite my young friends to come on up and join me for a little message. Good morning. Good morning. I'll move out of the way. So, that last scripture passage, they talked about, they said something about every time that these people ate and they had a like meal in front of them, they were happy. So what kind of food makes you happy? If somebody put it out in front of you, what would make you happy? A bowl full of Skittles? Well, yeah, M&M's chocolate. Yeah, I like the chocolate a little bit better than the... What would make you happy if, if all of a sudden, let's say, um, one of your parents was making lunch? What's your favorite lunch? S 
sardine pizza? Mmm. That's, That's your favorite, yeah. Sardine pizza. We got a we got a winner. Well, here's something kind of funny. And I'll just say this. Sometimes kids are a little fickle with what they eat. In other words, you're a little picky. Right? I mean, you just don't get all happy with whatever is put in front of you. It's kind of like, well, I, I don't like that. Well, here's something. When I was a kid, I grew up in, out in the country, and my mom would pack a lunch. Okay, so she would, well, this is what you typically would get. Just a brown paper bag, right? There might be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in there. Or my dad's favorite, lard sandwich. Huh? Huh? You know, lard, lard is just fat on a piece of bread. But you might get some cookies in here. You might get a, some chips. But it's kind of plain, and it's kind of like no fun. Well, then once in a while, my mom, she got smart. And she would write things on the bag. What does that say? Have a wonderful day. And he usually said, have a wonderful day, Danny. Be good at school. They always had these really fun little messages on it. And it made me go, wow, that's kind of cool. My mom thought about me today. But it's the same peanut butter and jelly sandwich in there. So, but then somebody got the crazy idea. This is back in the mid-70s. They created something because they knew kids. They said, you know, kids, when they go to a restaurant, they just don't know what to, what to order. In other words, they probably pick on their parents' food, you know. So, like, you go to a restaurant, you look at the menu, and you have no clue what you want, so your parents would buy it for you. Well, have you ever seen one of these? Yes. What is it? A happy meal. A happy meal. A happy. So what do you get in it? Some food. What do you order with it? What do you get? Chicken McNuggets. What else comes with it? Fries. Apples. And the what? Chocolate milk. They also have apples now. You can get Golgurt in some places. Do you know where it started? Where the first one was done? I, I found this pretty fascinating. Guatemala. You would think this would be something that us, I guess, USA citizens would have came up with. but And it was all because they were thinking of you. Now, again, some people would say this is not, not the most nutritious lunch you can get. But I'll tell you what. It makes you happy. And what they did was they looked at it and said, okay, moms and dads are getting really busy and the kids really aren't knowing what they want to eat, so let's just put it in a package and let them read it, look at the outside, play with the box, whatever. What's the other thing you get in a Happy Meal? A toy. Who would have thought that? So literally it becomes a message to you that, and again, I'm not, I'm not here shilling for McDonald's Corporation or anything, so anybody online, you don't have to order a Happy Meal. But what it says is that we can be happy with what we have. And sometimes it's got to be right out in front of us saying, be happy. And that's okay. So sometimes, again, when we don't know what, what we're getting, we just need to be joyful in what we have. And that's what the, the disciples with Christ afterward, they said, every meal, we're happy because we're together and we have something to eat. So yeah, my favorite is usually the cheeseburger, the fries. I do like the apple slices. And you do get a soda or something, or chocolate milk or whatever. But there you go. So please pray with me. Dear Jesus, you make every meal a happy meal. Because we know that what you have given us 
was given in love. And it did say, it said, have a happy day. We praise your name. Amen. So I got something. It wasn't in the box, but. Well, thank you. You can each have two. They have so many in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Want another one? Take two. Thank you. I would like to welcome the Celebration Singers up to the altar to, to sing a beautiful song by a really wonderful composer from England by the name of John Rutter called Look at the World. Thankful hearts that we may see. 
We are His hands, stewards of all His bounty. He is the earth and is the heavens above. Praise to Thee, O Lord, for all creation. Give us Thank you. It's awesome. So it's kind of interesting how things channel sometimes, and, and you don't expect them to work out the way they do. So this picture that Mikey picked. So again, I, I send him the, the sermon titles, and then he picks these random photos or pictures. And I love that picture. I love it. And as Brenda and I were driving down from Sheboygan this morning, I, was, I usually listen to, you know, I guess church service. <laughs> Nothing like, you know, listening to a church service and then doing a church service. Yeah, a lot. But the theme was, Bridges. Huh? What? There's something weird going on here. I don't know what it is. There was something about the, the sermon that I was listening to also that I, I'm just going to mention because it's really interesting how the scripture passage that we get from Acts and also what we got from the psalm and also what was in one of our hymns this morning. It was talking about bridge builders. Hello. <laughs> bridge, build, bridge builders. Literally, that we are all bridge builders by design. I'll explain. Priests in other language literally is in Latin, when you pull it apart, it becomes bridge builder. I didn't know that. Never heard it before. I'm going to say look it up because I didn't, but I heard it on the radio. But it was really good because it said, okay, every time in Scripture, you know, we always get this thing where you priestly or all you priests and we always think, well, they're not talking about us. It, Psalm 134, come bless God, all you servants of God, you priests of God. In other words, the audience wasn't just a couple of people that went to seminary that were sitting there. The priests were everybody, anybody who lived and breathed and knew God. If you knew God, if you knew love, you become a bridge builder. You were created by the biggest bridge builder, the omnipotent, the holy one who actually literally created us to be the bridge between earth and heaven. Side note, when we lost our way, we got another bridge builder, Jesus Christ, to put us back on track. Anyway, enough about, about that. See, that's what goes through my head. It's like, People go, why don't you write your sermon? I'm like, because there's too many things out there. It's too fun. I love this scripture from Acts. The writer literally is telling us what we are and what we're supposed to do with it. And again, we get that a lot in the Bible. There's a lot, especially in the Gospels, and especially the letters that we get. 
from Peter and Paul. But I wanted you to focus on be the church. All right. I know in this congregation there are a lot of teachers. Anybody who's ever been a teacher, raise your hand. All right, I'm going to have you put your hands back down. Who's ever been a teacher? Every one of you. If you didn't, you missed it. (laughs) You didn't have to grade anything, but you had to give of yourself to someone else and explain to them maybe something that they might want to know. Well, here you go. Here's my teaching moment. I'm going to be a teacher. So what's the difference between that phrase, be the church, or what the world thinks of us sometimes, change the to a. Be the church or be a church. What's the difference? Okay, now the teachers that are out there, you tell me what that difference is. What what changes There's no wrong answer. I'm not going to grade you. But I'll tell if you're wrong. (laughs) Yeah. What's that? Owning it. Good. We are the church. We are priests. We are the priests. Well, here's what I found. Here we go. Because I looked it up, and it's on my paper. (laughs) The definite article, the, is used before a noun to indicate that the identity of the noun is known to the reader. So if I put the in front of church, it means I know what church is. I like that. The indefinite article, a or an, is used before a noun that is general or when its identity is not known. There are certain situations in which a noun takes no article. So let's think about that again. Be the church or be a church I know my head was spinning too it's like it's like what but and here's one other explanation the is used to refer to specific or particular nouns a or an is used to modify non-specific or non-particular nouns Did you follow that <laughs> So, it says that we understand, when we say be the church, we understand what church is. So that goes to the next question. What's church? What's church? Gathering of people. What does the outside world think of church? Yeah, religious fanatics. They think we're, we've got this dogma that we have to do certain things because the church tells us that we have to do it or a church tells us that we have to do it. Some people say it's... Where one or more are gathered. Yes. So what is specific when we look at the reading that we got from Acts? And I'll read a little part of it again. And again, this is basically, this is Luke, the writer. And I'll I'll, kind of go through the whole thing again because it's so good. Listen for church. Listen for church in this scripture. That day about 3,000 took him at his word, were baptized, and were signed up. This is with Peter, one of the apostles, that followed Jesus. This is a recounting of what was going on. Again, that day about 3,000 took him at his word. In other words, 
he was preaching the gospel. He was giving everyone the good news of Jesus Christ. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles. Be the church. Teach the good news. The life together, the common meal, and the prayers all became a part of what they were learning about. It reminded them. And to go back to the gospel, everyone around was in awe. All those wonders and signs done through the apostles. And all the believers lived in wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. They sold whatever they owned and pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. Church. Church. If you didn't know anything other than that, then you are a member of the church. They followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple. I love this part, and this is what brought up my children's sermon. Followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration. Exuberant and joyful as they praised God. We look at the communion table as being this grand celebration, but it's really supposed to be about every time you sit together and you have a meal. You are celebrating, thanking God, and saying, because of this, we can be the church. I can be the church. Not a church. The church. And every day, their number grew is God added those who were saved. Wow. The church. We think it's so simple. We think that we know. Kindergarten teacher was observing her classroom as the children drew pictures. The teacher would occasionally walk around and see each child's artwork. As she approached one little girl who was working especially hard, she asked what the drawing was. The little girl told her, I'm drawing God. But sweetie, the teacher replied, no one actually knows what God looks like. Automatically, the little girl continued drawing and said, well, they certainly will in a minute. I think the world today has lost the sight of what the church is because we've allowed them to. We've allowed them to put us up as a symbol rather than a way. We've allowed the world to define us that we all just come into this building, this is where we do our thing, and then we just go out and we go about our days. We need to change that. We need to change it so that they understand us as the church that does. The church that knows. And not that we're saying people don't know, but we want them to know how loved they are. Is that a hard message? It should be the easiest one we have. It should be the one that flows through us with everything we do. When we write on a paper bag, have a wonderful day, we mean it. We are challenged to redefine church. This gathering of people this morning, the gathering that we have with us online, I want you to think about how it is that we can let people know the church lives and is living in us. 
We don't want to pull them in. We want to open the doors, get out there, let them experience it in their place, in their home, in their hearts. I was talking to somebody about this uh, yesterday, about how the church is here to, if nothing else, it's kind of like a, like a chef. Did you ever use a steel? Like when you got a dull knife, you go, shh, 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 shh. a steel. What a steel does is it refines and takes the edges off so that it can now be purposeful again. The church is literally like the steel. We come here to be refined, to find again our passion, to find again love in a very focused manner so that we can now go and focus out there. That's what this place is for. But you are the church. We are the church. We're not a church. We're asked to be the church. And yes, all those things underneath it now should open your eyes to what it is church can be. So I thank all of you for holding in your hearts and knowing that you are a part of the foundation, but you're also a part of the grounds that surround this building. You are growing. And I thank you and I thank God that I'm blessed to be here with you in this journey. So let us pray. Dear Creating God, we are humbled by those things you ask of us. Sometimes we think they're so hard, we think they're so difficult that we can't remember everything we're supposed to do. And then we fail because we get unfocused. We know that love is what creation is about. And that when we hold back love, when we hold back care, when we hold back ourselves from you and others, oh God, that is when we lose sight of being the church. So refine us, O Lord, refine us. Make us sharp, but not too sharp that we hurt others, but that we become a useful, a useful tool in your creation of love. We ask this in your name. Amen. So we know the church, and we, we again, when you, when you talk about the outside world and they, you say, wow, I, I belong to a church, first thing they're thinking of is, oh, that place that they're going to make you sit for an hour through some boring, long sermon, you're going to sing some hymns, and yeah, they're going to ask you for money. And I say, Yeah. Because this is another place where we can focus on what it is that we've received from God, what we've received from others, what we've received through our efforts, and now have the privilege to share it with others. Yes, the church finances things that create the church for refining forgiving, but I want you to remember that it is so that we can be even more productive as a group. We know we can do things on an individual basis, and I want us to.
I want us to know that every little thing that we do is important and a blessing. I go back to my mom's message on my lunch box or the note that she would put inside of it. You do that when you share with what you have with others. You are literally putting a note into their meal or into their lives saying, I hope this helps. Yes. So with that, let us join together in our offering prayer. Lord, how can we remember all your creation in this offering? You have given You have given us your grace and love. You have given us families and friends. You have given us this church. Accept at this time our offering of love. You give us the warmth of summer. You give us the colors of autumn. You give us the chill of winter. You give us the new life and growth of springtime with the reminder of new life in Christ. Lord of heaven and earth, accept now our gifts in our lives that the world and all people may praise your name. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join with me in the singing of the doxology. Join with me in our prayer of dedication. Our heavenly God, all we have is because of you. May the gifts we give this day become a blessing for your church, your community, your state, your nation, your world, empowering us to do the work to which you call us. May our faithful giving be used wisely with each one's gift cherished, and each one's needs met. Continue to gather us at your table, which is not limited to our one church, but moves and breathes across varied worship spaces and places, across diverse cultures. May these gifts strengthen the bodies and nourish the spirits to bring glory to you. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. And you may be seated. Yes, you are the bridge builders. And I hope you take that imagery into everything that you do. In other words, you can bridge between the have and the have nots, you can bridge between the ones that are loved not loved, that's you. It's always said that we're, we're created in the image of God. And if God is the supreme bridge builder, that means we know how to do it. So this morning, when we join together in prayers, we become that bridge builder. Because we're literally asking God to focus with us We don't know how the bridge is going to be built. We don't know when it's going to be built or how that person that we're trying to bridge with will claim either freedom or justice or healing. But we know there's a connection. And that is church. So this morning, we pray for Uncle Dan, who is transitioning in the last stage of life in hospice care. Prayers for the strength for Brian in overcoming his addiction. Congratulations to Megan for directing a great musical with Aaron Middle School. What was it? Beauty and the Beast. 
That's a great one. Um, a joy. Melan Melanie and Andre welcoming a baby girl to the family by Avira Viola. Avery, is that what it is? Avery Viola. That's a, that's a pretty name. It's really pretty. In her prayers also, um, yeah, Tom and Beverly Zellner, who I visited with uh, yesterday, and she's in the last stages of her transition. But what a wonderful testimony to church. I was there, uh, I was there with a good friend of ours, or I don't know if you know Reverend Bob Ullman, but he and I both went to visit them. And the reason, and here, here's where church gets a bad name sometimes. Literally, sometimes I, as a pastor, have, they call it boundaries, where another pastor cannot, for example, be with that family if they're a member of Trinity. They never fully became members here, but they did visit with us, and they have been watching us online for over two years. And they actually liked my sermons. <laughs> yes. They enjoyed them. <laughs> but to sit there with Bob, who knew them for over 20 years, and to hear the stories and to hear that love, that to me was more important than any boundary that this denomination could put on me. And we'll be planning together her celebration of life for here at Trinity. So prayers to them. And I know there's more people in your lives that you want to focus on. And that's why right now I want to take a moment for you to have an opportunity to think of those people in your life that you want to build that bridge. So let us do that right now in silence together. O Holy One, these your people, this your church, we come together with joys, but we also come together with pain. We come here knowing that we can't take care of everything, but we know that we're never alone that you are with us, that you send people in our lives to remind us that all can be loved and all can be loving. So be with all of these, your people. And your people are, are all. There is no church affiliation that goes alongside a child of God. So we ask for your presence and your healing. And we were given a gift by you, your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us a prayer that we now say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, one more. Belated happy birthday to Dave Milky from the e Eagle River people. Oh no. Happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Dave. From the Eagle River people. Happy birthday to you. Um, good morning. I'm Kathy Dom. I am a new council person and also a member of Christian Nurture and Fellowship. I want to welcome all of you. It's glad to see you. Um, an, a special welcome to Fred Thylacker, who we're so glad to see you today. And I'm especially glad you drove safely here. <laughs> I feel like that's a big deal for you. So we're glad you made it and um, glad to see you. Um, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about Christian Nurture and Fellowship. Sometimes it's called CNF. So if you don't know, that's what we are, Christian Nurture. We support Kathy Haas with the Sunday School um, and any other youth programs we come up with. We also do a lot of fellowship activities. We have a Halloween trunk or treat. We do the annual meeting lunch, the Easter breakfast. We also help with coffee hour and making sure you have stuff that you need and um, the sign up, mm -hmm. I believe that's what we do. Um, but there's only three of us. So that's a lot on our plates that are already full. So if you are looking for something to do, um, you can come join us. Um, any new ideas are welcome and new people are welcome. Right now we are meeting as needed, but we can make that a little more formal in the fall. So um, please see me or Kathy Haas um, and we'll be glad to include you in our group. Um, I know there's a lot going on today. There's bingo. Bingo. Which is, it's a great day for bingo, right? There's not a lot you can do. Go home, take a nap. I know you probably napped yesterday like me. <laughs> um, so stick around for bingo. I know there's a sandwich in that. Yep, we're going to feed you too. Feed and stuff for bingo. Um, I know the Undy 500 is going on. There's information back at the hotspot. Um... Is there any other announcements? I see some hands. Yes, I did owe you. I hope everybody comes down for bingo. However, I am. <laughs> it's okay. a I just have to just belt it like closer. a hot spot announcement. Okay. Um, I would like to announce that the worship and arts team is having a special red white and blue coffee hour on Sunday, May 21st. That's the Sunday before the Memorial Weekend after church down in the dining hall. The worship and arts team are providing red, white, and blue treats, but I want to encourage everybody in the congregation to be creative and bring in their own patriotic treats to enjoy during that fellowship hour. I will be, or others will be giving you reminders on this, so I want you to put down on your calendar that May 21st date, and we hope that you come. And I personally am looking forward to seeing and tasting a lot of red, white, and blue down there. Yum, yum. <laughs> the blue, though, that'd be on your tongue, wouldn't it? Right. We could tell who had the blue treats. It stays there forever. Yeah. And yeah. one more way you can be the church is to volunteer one hour of your time, maybe two, including transportation. We're still looking for three more people to go to the Hope Center on July 5th, which is a Wednesday, I believe. It's a long ways off, but they need to know by June and we need three more people. So if you can spare your time, come to the church here and meet with some of the others that you can follow out there. Everyone who is volunteering should bring a gallon of milk. They have more people than ever who need, who come there for meals and they depend upon the servers. So we'd love to have you. There's a sign up sheet in the back but it's near the table where the um, little devotional booklets are. Please consider this. I think that's everything, so thank you so much. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just add that I was, uh, 
honored and privileged to represent Trinity at the association meeting yesterday. Um, it was at Pilgrim in Grafton. And you talk about uh, being nervous a little bit. I had to sit next to Franz Riegert for the, <laughs> for the morning. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. But uh, he says, or everybody says, welcome and hi to Trinity. And um, it was a great, uh, the, the theme speaker um, that was there, the keynote was, a phenomenal um, pastor that works in the inner city of Chicago at Gilead Church, um, a UCC church that's a new startup. And her claim to fame is she used to be a stand-up comedian in New York or Boston, one of those two. And um, the, the whole theme was on storytelling. And I loved it. There's some things that we'll be trying here um, over. <laughs> Connie's like, yeah, that's going to be good. Um, but where we're going to become part of the storytelling of it. And there's some neat things that she did in that workshop that uh, I'm going to bring, bring to all of you, and we'll have fun with it. So again, uh, it was great to see a lot of people and some great conversations and know that we are a part of a big, the church. Lots. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we still need. We still are looking for two people to um, represent us at the Wisconsin Conference meeting that's in Green Lake, and that's in June. And um, we will find you. We'll find you. <laughs> you get a tap on the shoulder, and it's going to be, "Hey, you, you just want a free trip to Green Lake." <laughs> so, let's sing a song. Please rise if you can and sing a, a great closing hymn, "My Peace." Uh, let's sing it twice. My peace I give unto you It's a peace that the world cannot give It's a peace that the world cannot understand It's a peace that the world cannot give. It's a peace that the world cannot understand. Peace to know, peace to live. My peace I give unto you. You are the church. And you were the church, really, when you think about it, the minute you were born. Every experience that you've had up to this point in your life has been a bridge that was built and given to you from someone or from God or all of the above. Become the priests not spouting some religious mantra, but showing in your life that love, love, love is the answer. So let God pull you out of this, this place. And may God let you experience the love in all that you meet and that they may be loved because they know you love. Let's get out there. Be the church. Let the people say amen. 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 <laughs>